Now, if you think about it, the weight of the evidence or the strength of the evidence that we have should in some way contribute to how reasonable or rational we are in believing a proposition. But let's consider an example that I think is going to make this point. Jim Schwartz teaches a physical education class of 100 students. He knows that there are 51 freshmen and 49 sophomores in the class. After class one day, he finds that one student left a book in the room. He has no reason at all to think that either a freshman or sophomore, that either a freshman or sophomore are more likely to leave a book behind. Knowing that there are more freshmen than sophomores in the class, Jim believes that the book belongs to a freshman. Think about proposition number 21. The person who left the book behind is a freshman. Is it rational for reasonable for Jim to believe this proposition? Now, according to that principle of rational belief that we had, if a person possesses more evidence in favor of proposition than against the proposition, then it's reasonable for him or her to believe it. So we have more evidence in this case, right? We have slight, maybe it's not a lot more evidence, but you know, we know it's 51 49 uh, freshman to sophomore. So Jim's evidence seems to be that there are more freshmen than sophomores in the class, 51 to 49. Now I ask yourself, if this is Jim's only evidence, is Jim Shorts reasonable or rational in believing 24? And you say, gee, you know, in this case, it is awfully close. And if we were going to depict it on a diagram, we have the weight and maybe this isn't a good one because maybe it's, you know, it's weighed too heavily, or seesaw is weighed too heavily in favor of freshmen. But if you think about it, how strongly should Jim believe that the book was left behind by a freshman? Well, he shouldn't believe it very strongly, but, you know, if he had to take a bet one way or the other, he should go for a freshman. 